Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Hope you had a good break. Uh, got something to drink. Right, uh, let's continue. Um, we, we move on to chapter four in this session. Um, a very simple chapter. Uh, the organizational aspect on a youth, the youth ministry. Okay. Uh, now, if you remember, if you can recall, in the worship ministry, we studied about the organizational aspect and the spiritual aspect. Um, so there are two different aspects to any ministry. Um, it's, yeah, it's very important that uh, we, we cannot forget the organizational aspect of uh, a ministry while and only be focused on the spiritual aspect of it, uh, right? And so both goes hand in hand. If you, if your organizational aspect is not strong enough, then it will eventually have uh, some sort of uh, an impact or an effect uh, on the spiritual aspect of it. Okay, so that's what we're going to learn in this chapter. Chapter four is the organizational aspect of the youth ministry. Uh, you'll see a chart uh, in your PDF and how. Uh, uh, how the how it's structured here at APC. Um, we have the senior pastor under whom under whose supervision uh, youth pastor is accountable to the senior pastor, and then under the youth pastor, under the supervision of the youth pastor, you have multiple teams uh, from um, the youth ministry operations team. Uh, we look at all those different teams and uh, what they do very briefly. Right. So youth ministry operations team, creative team, and the core team leaders, youth life group leaders, and youth worship coordinators. Um, there's just a few. So, uh, But the, these were the teams that um, were, f were, were was what I had uh, while I was the youth pastor. And there are more teams that's added, but uh, this is basically the gist of it. Okay, so uh, you know, if we if we're going to build anything big, we need to be, have a strong base, right? And uh, the, so your structure is that base. Uh, your your teams are that base, like the foundation on uh, how high you could build, uh, or how strong you want to build your ministry. Okay, so from the senior pastor, what is the role of the pa of the senior pastor uh, in the context of youth ministry? Uh, is that he provides general vision, direction, and motivation. Right, he he provides general vision, uh, direction, and motivation, uh, and then he shares his goals for youth ministry to the youth pastor. Right. So we have to remember, although we have different ministries in a church, right? you could have the children's ministry, youth ministry, teens ministry, women's ministry, men's ministry. Uh, what else am I missing? Okay. Uh, you know, we need to remember that all of those ministries are under the supervision of the senior pastor. So he's the senior pastor, right? Uh, he or she. Um, and ultimately, a senior pastor is accountable to God uh, for his ministry, for his actions, and everything that they do. And so the, the senior pastor will have a vision, a heart uh, for, you know, for a particular ministry. Right? It's, the responsibility doesn't simply end by hiring a, ch a children's church pastor or a youth pastor and say, OK, you're the youth pastor. You lead youth ministry however you want to do it. Uh, you know, but uh, I'm sure that's been done. But uh, the role of a senior pastor is that he provides uh, or guides by giving a general vision, saying, OK. And I would regularly have this meeting with uh, my senior pastor, Pastor Ashish, on, on uh, his heart for youth ministry. Uh, because uh, when I joined, the APC was almost already uh, 18 years old. right? <laughs> Uh, and so he has seen uh, multiple generation of young people come and go. Uh, he's seen the highs and the lows, uh, the success and the failures, uh, the positives and the negatives uh, of the youth ministry, of uh, what has worked well, what has not worked well, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, all I had to do is just receive from the richness of his experience and so, uh, you know, from his wisdom and. Uh, and so he would uh, out, give me an outline of his heart for the ministry, and yet at the same time give uh, you know me the liberty 
to make all the big decisions right he would his overall outline would be okay we need to equip our youth we we want to uh, empower them and so that they would go out and evangelize uh, you know they would be the evangelists at wherever they are that they would share about jesus freely uh, with their with their friends and or colleagues uh, for that matter and so that was a, just an outline a general vision uh, that uh, that Pastor Ashish gave me as the senior pastor, and uh, and so if you are the senior pastor uh, of your church, uh, this should be your role: is not just hire a children's church pastor or a youth pastor and let them, you know, what they just tell them to do whatever they feel like doing. Uh, but that that's not entirely uh, a sense of freedom, I would say. Right. Uh, there should be accountability in freedom. You know, like the people of Israel, they were set free from Egypt, from bondage and slaves and slavery. But God just did not bring them out and, you know, say, okay, now you go do whatever you want to do. You know, this is their land flowing with milk and honey. Now you're free. No, he gave them the law. Right. Uh, he tells them, uh, I brought you out of Egypt unto myself. Right. He tells them he, they are set apart. And so, uh, Freedom, a false sense of freedom is uh, saying, okay, you know, there is no accountability, there is no responsibility or commitment, uh, there is no vision, etc., etc. But a right sense of freedom will always have a sense of accountability, sense of responsibility, commitment, um, faithfulness, etc., etc. Right? And so this, both, uh, this works both ways if you're the senior pastor make sure that you give a general vision direction and motivation to your youth pastor youth leaders etc and if you are the youth pastor please be open to receive general vision direction and motivation okay don't be uh, a stubborn person by saying okay no i'm the youth pastor i will do what i have to do uh, no, it doesn't work like that, right? Once again, just reflecting back to worship ministry and how we learned from First Chronicles chapter 25, we saw that uh, Asaph and his, uh, and his sons, Heman and his sons, and Jerithan and his sons, they were all under the supervision of the king, that is David, right? They were all submissive uh, under, the, under his leadership. And so they served one another uh, by being under the supervision of the king. And, uh, and I think that's uh, so uh, very important. There's something beautiful about it. Okay, so that's the role of the pastor. And what's the role of the youth pastor? It's kind of still the same, but you're just taking the general vision direction uh, and motivation that your senior pastor gives you, and you're kind of amplifying it. You're making it a little bigger. Uh, you're magnifying it, right? Not forgetting you're still a pastor, uh, the the simple meaning of that is to still shepherd, um, uh, you know, to, to guide for your flock, to provide for your flock, to protect your flock, to care for them. Uh, that's what a uh, pastor simply means, is that you are called to be a shepherd. Uh, guide them, uh, protect them, walk with them, journey along with them, disciple, uh, you know, do life with them. And basically, that's what it is. So that's the role of the youth pastor is you emphasize on the vision, you make it bigger, uh, amplified, magnified, and then you continue working, uh, walking with the young people by uh, by getting to know them. Okay, um, all good? Yes. Fantastic, okay. Thank you, Zelda, Toby. Uh, all right, so uh, the next thing or the, the next foundation of having a successful uh, youth ministry is in having a strong core team, right? A strong core team. Uh, and, and this is important in so many levels. One is to, so that the youth pastor does not have all this burden of handling various aspects of youth ministry so that uh, he or she doesn't have to feel like they have to do it alone or they have to do everything uh, by themselves right because if that happens if that continues uh, you know the result of that is you are going to be physically and spiritually uh, worn out uh, or what they call it as a, a burnout right uh, is because you're doing everything uh, and so it comes down uh, one of the key responsibilities of a leader uh, is uh, should be in building a team 
and I can tell you in experience that it is not easy. <laughs> um, can I hear an amen? But uh, you know, especially a youth core team, uh, right now. The young people, like I mentioned, they uh, if they are committed, you know, they will they will give you your their everything. Uh, but until they come, you know, until they take that step uh, of faith into that waters, you know, uh, the hardest thing is to bring them to the waters. <laughs> is uh, you know, so uh, yeah, that's that, that it's it's not going to be easy. And as a leader, um, as a pastor, uh, be patient. Uh, it is very easy, and it is very possible that to get dis to get discouraged. In this journey like you know there will be week after week after week where you're where you are doing things uh or you know by yourself and um you know i have been there i know a couple of individuals or at least one individual from this class who's uh doing that kind of taking care leading worship preaching uh you know double duty triple duty uh sometimes you're the setup team uh you're, you're the media team uh you're the welcome team you're the ushering team um <laughs> Yeah, you're the sound team, uh, you're the worship leader, you're the worship team, and then you're also the preacher. Um, it <laughs> I have seen individuals do that. Uh, I'm sure you have seen individuals do that. And uh, but while there is some fun to it, uh, it's a little bit of fun in it, um, it, it we, it's not going to sustain uh, for long it, it's and it is not advisable to you know to do everything by yourself right and so that's why it's important that you build a strong team um right and so currently this is what the youth ministry team looks like uh you have the core team uh in just a minute i'll take i'll share the responsibilities of the core team in just a bit but um so the core team what do they do i, I during my time as a youth pastor i had there were approximately 15 of them in in the core team a 15 member core team uh, and uh, and you should also remember that APC has five locations in the city of Bangalore right so we have APC central which is the largest congregation and then we have a church in Bangalore south north east and west so four plus one and, um, and the youth pastor is not only present so he, he can't be in all five locations at once um, unless we decide to go on Zoom, uh, which we found out during the pandemic. But uh, it's a different story. Uh, you know, the core team and the core team comprised of individuals from all the other locations. There were at least three individuals from Bangalore South or Bangalore East, Bangalore North and Bangalore uh, west <clears throat> actually west and north were relatively small but uh, the point was to have individuals from every other location uh, so that now you know they are my extension they are like my extension they are my hands uh, they are my representatives um, right they represent uh, the vision of the youth ministry to the youth in their location Okay, um, so the core team is important. Um, they uh, they share in your responsibilities, uh, and then there are the youth life group leaders. Um, you know, life group leaders are a cell group, uh, depending on how, you know what you use. Life group simply means small groups or cell groups in our context. Uh, and youth worship coordinators, uh, you know, they are coordinators who help in organizing just the worship leaders and the worship team for every youth event, like the youth camp, youth retreat. Uh, youth meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So not all the pressure is always on the worship pastor. Um, and then there's the creative team. Um, you know, how can we come up with something creative to interact with the young people on our social media page or our Instagram page? Uh, how can we uh, keep it interactive? And uh, yeah, there's the decor team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably share uh, a Google sheet in just a minute on, on how we plan for a youth camp, if possible. But I, I, yeah, just give me a minute. So uh, building a youth, a strong youth ministry begins with uh, having a vision, 
identifying your audience and then immediately having a strong team is very crucial. Uh, you know, the wider your team decides how deep you want to go as well. So, you know, I hope that made sense, right? The wider your team uh, will allow you or give you the freedom to go deeper in each of those areas, right? And now because you have a strong team, uh, you as a, a pastor uh, have this freedom or more time in your hands, so to speak, to make relationships a point so that you are not breaking your head about all the logistical part uh, while you, you know, you've, You've done your bit. You've given responsibilities to different teams. Uh, they're handling it. You, you've, uh, what's that word? You've uh, delegated, right? That's the word. Delegated responsibilities and commitments to different teams. Uh, you, all you have to do is follow up with them. Uh, but now, since you have more time on your hands, you can make relationships your point, like engage with the individuals now, getting to know them, getting to know the people of the core team. Uh, I know, uh, catching up for a coffee, uh, you know, getting to do life with them, uh, whatever it is, right? Uh, so the point is you are building relationship. Uh, you know, the talks like relational re leadership, this might come under that category. But in general, uh, you know, why are we doing ministry? Right? It could be children's ministry, youth ministry. Why are we doing church? It's for the people, isn't it? Uh, if not for them, what is ministry? What is the point? Are you with me, right? And so it's important that we care for the people, uh, engage with them, make time for them, and that you are. And by doing so, you are showing that you are a leader who is interested, uh, in who is intentional in the well-being uh, of their lives. Uh, to lead with care, because uh, and I've always kept this close to my heart is that the young people or the youth. They don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay, They don't really care how good your theology is. They don't really care how well you're able to articulate the Trinity and all these uh, doctrinal things. Uh, you know, sure, some of them do care. But uh, while that is important, they don't really care uh, how much you know until they know how much you care for them. Okay, this is very important. This is basically the core of the youth ministry is that they need to know that they are cared for. They are the sheep, you are the shepherd. Right? Uh, it is our responsibility to guide them, lead them, protect them, etc. Right? And that leads to uh, mentoring young people or discipling them. Now sure, discipleship uh, works both ways. For example, uh, you know, the disciples of Jesus. Jesus went to them and said, follow me. That was their call, an invitation. But the disciples had a choice to say yes or no to that invitation. And so it's one thing to want to disciple, and it's the other. It's another thing to uh, wanting to be discipled. Okay, so you need two hands to clap, kind of thing, right? Uh, and so if you, if you are not able to mentor, if you are not able to disciple a certain individuals, although you are, you might be willing as a leader, uh, it is also their responsibility to say that I want to be discipled by you, right? And I think we can bring them to a point. Uh, we can try our bit by you know making relationships important, hanging out with them, and letting them know that you are for them, that uh, you know that you care about them. And after you've done everything you can, and if they are still not interested. Um, then we can't blame ourselves. Okay, uh, am I making sense, guys? Uh, I know I'm, I, I've kind of spoken quite a bit for 20 minutes now, but uh, is this all making sense somewhere, something? Okay, all right. Thank you. I trust you guys. <laughs> So uh, make relationships important, lead with care, uh, and disciple your young people, uh, mentor them. Uh, all of that is going to determine uh, the success and the progress of your youth ministry. And finally, and I can't stress on this uh, enough, is rely upon God. Rely upon God. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a posture of humility. 
right? And the Proverbs says, uh, you know, uh, in all your ways acknowledge Him. Don't lean on your own understanding. Right? Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. Uh, so, and I learned, I've learned a great deal from that scripture. Is and uh, why I wanted to add this point in. Um, in youth ministry for a pastor is that I remember, uh, you know, the first year of uh, the, as a youth pastor, I I was very dependent on God for everything I wanted to do in youth ministry because it was the first year and I didn't know what to do, uh, you know, for, um, in terms of, uh, you know, what topics do I choose, uh, Lord? What do I do this month? What topic do I teach on? Uh, you know etc etc what theme uh, do i choose for the youth camp it's a big deal isn't it youth camp uh, 150 young people are going to be there uh, we you know we're, we're going to have a, some kind of a theme or a topic uh, that's going to make everybody want to come what's it going to be and i remember the first year as a youth pastor being very uh, you know dependent on god uh, you know in in everything that i wanted and and i realized uh, and and because of the success of the first year, like, okay, the, the youth camp first year was a success and everything went well. The ministry has grown. And somewhere in the second year, uh, you know, I was like, huh, okay, you know, I, I got this figured out. I think I can do youth ministry now. There was, if, if we, you know, again, the Bible says, guard your heart. Isn't it? It's like, uh, why does it use that language in sense guard you know or protect your heart uh you when you, when i think of those words guard or protect i i can imagine children for example because we guard our children we protect our children why because they are weak they don't necessarily they can't necessarily defend themselves isn't it and therefore we protect them we guard them and if the bible is saying protect your heart or guard your heart because it's it's simply by saying that uh, it's a very dangerous thing, you know, that thing you have called heart. It's it's uh, uh, because out of that flows uh, everything else. Um, and if I did, and I and I realized that because there was a point in my journey as a youth pastor where I did not protect my heart enough, and pride began to creep in by saying that, hey, you did this one year, you got this now. You you figured out the formula, you understand the chemistry now. You know what to do, uh, you know the right things to say. Uh, you know how this is going to work out, and uh, and you know God is so good. He's so kind. He's so he's so beautifully merciful and patient and kind and gentle that He gives a slight nudge, and says, "So you don't want me this year." It's the most gentle question uh, you know I've ever been asked, and it ab absolutely wrecked me, um, you know, humbled me, broke me, and 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 so that point is coming from the place of uh, really brokenness and uh, and also uh, pride uh, in a sense that I'm not very proud about uh, you know what, what the posture of my heart back then was, and so I felt like uh, you know that having that point in there being rely upon God in in you know in every aspect in every day every week uh, every month regardless of how many years you have experience as a leader or a pastor it is so important that we rely upon God in all our ways that we need to acknowledge him okay so uh, that's the that's another important point so let's look at some of the responsibilities uh, um, or the expectations that is set for the core team members. Okay, we're just going to get a little bit more uh, into the organizational aspect of it. So I hope you don't mind. Um, so what are some of the expectations that is set for the core team member? Right. So the core team will comprise of a few selected youth leaders from each location. I'm just reading from your notes. Uh, the core team will work with the youth pastor to plan, to organize, and mobilize the youth and help fulfill the vision and mission of the youth ministry at ATC. 
Yeah, the core team members are requested to be regular to the youth core team meetings. Um, you, core team members are to lead by example and serve the young people at APC. Um, core team members will maintain a strong spiritual personal walk with the Lord and demonstrate godly example in life and conduct. Core team members will see their responsibility as ministry unto the Lord. Our core team members will be regular in attending monthly core team meetings. Uh, I think that's repeated. Our core team members who are team leaders or volunteers will send in regular updates on their areas of ministry to the youth pastor. So, uh, so you see the responsibility of a core team members are, uh, are not for the faint heart to do. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of responsibility and expectation that is set uh, from the core team members. Now, uh, let me see if I can, uh, while I try to get a planning document for the youth camp, uh, I'll, let me share this, you know, as much as, you know, yes, we are, they are volunteers. Um, we understand that they are volunteers, that they're giving their time in volunteering for the church. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they have said their yes saying, yes, I will do all of this. That means, uh, you know, as a youth pastor, if an individual says, let me actually, let me just get a, um, a, sh a Google sheet, maybe that can explain something better. Just give me a minute, guys. Uh, please bear with me. Do, 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 Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. I think this is the one. This is quite a fun sheet and not a very complicated uh, sheet, but it's something how we go about planning for a youth camp. I'm just going to give you uh, an insight into that. It's nothing fancy, it's a simple Google sheet. Okay, can you all see it? Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, this is like the planning, uh, a simple planning thing for the youth camp. 2022 um, that was the last youth camp I led uh, it starts off with the schedule just planning okay day one day two day three the dates are a 27th and all that uh, when are we going to depart from uh, Bangalore um, all, yeah, all the blah 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 you know what's going to happen after we arrive at the campsite these are all the organizational aspect of it okay and I'm sure you know some most of us have done some of all, all of these things but uh, day one, what's going to happen after we reach uh, somewhere somewhere in the middle of this, we forgot to add breakfast, so we will add breakfast. <laughs> or the, and there's room allocations that happens for all the attendees. Uh, there's lunch, then there's a kickoff session, activity number one, whatever that was. There's a snack, okay, session one uh, begins with worship, dinner, and then we have worship night. We actually had a retro night theme based on from the 70s and the 80s. So. Uh, we asked everybody to come dressed as 80s. It was quite fun that evening. Uh, this is just a schedule so you can see it, uh, who's doing what, um, who's speaking, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, then we obviously have the budget. Um, so this is kind of getting a little bit more candid with you guys so you all know. Uh, it's very rough in it. Okay, so you, uh, you have the, um, the transport, planning for buses, how much that's going to cost, uh, all the prices, the stay, how much it's going to cost per person, um, you know, hall charges, campfire, extra bus drivers paying for them, biscuits for travel, first aid kit, decor, miscellaneous, uh, honorarium, if there's any for the guest speaker. Um, so I have to put this budget first and get it approved by a senior pastor. And then once everything is done after the camp, I have to send back a report 
on the actuals. Okay, this is the estimate of all, how much it's going to cost, what's going to cost. And then here I have the actuals, and I'm going to I send it to him in a more beautiful way. But anyways, okay, the, the different teams, the core teams. So here we have uh, to make a youth camp happen. A lot of these teams, uh, you know, have to work together. When you have the transport team, uh, we need someone who's going to coordinate at least seven people. Uh, we have three. We had three buses and 125 to 130 odd people. Right? It's not a joke, right? So we need uh, someone who would coordinate with, uh, and it was 45 people per bus. 45 young people per bus and 45 in one bus. Okay, uh, that, that 45 itself is like a it's a big number, right? And so you need individuals who can take care, uh, coordinate with all these you know, individuals uh, and letting them know which is the pickup point, what time the bus leaves, if they don't make it on time, the bus will leave, blah, 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 et cetera. Okay. And then there's a registration, people who are involved, uh, um, who will take care of the registrations um, and the room allocation team, the food team. That means at the end, before the end of every session, there should be two individuals or more who will inform to the kitchen saying, okay, the session is finishing, uh, is the food ready and whatnot. And then they'll communicate to me saying, okay, now the lunch is ready, everybody can go for lunch, etc. And then there's the games. No youth camp is, uh, you know, ever complete without games. And so who are they going, to, uh, who are the individuals who are responsibility uh, of that particular, uh, you know, thing. And then there's worship, sound and setup, who's going to MC hospitality, if there are speakers, uh, making sure everybody, uh, the, the speakers receive a water bottle or uh, uh, if they received, uh, if they have a presentation PPT that they've received from the speakers, making sure that they received it, making sure they have their rooms all well uh, organized, etc. Pick up from the bus stop or train station, whatever. First aid kit, making sure that there's a doctor or someone qualified enough to take care of some uh, unfortunate events uh, in, during the camp. Decor, uh, yeah, you know, decor, so, <laughs> so that it doesn't have to be a boring hall. Um, and the overall coordinator who's in charge of ushering and photography, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, this, I mean, the list just keeps getting extensive. Um, this is the checklist. Each team has a check <laughs> checklist, first aid kit. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't think all of this is important, guys, but anyway, so but the checklist is huge. I'm sharing all of this just so we know that the organizational aspect is huge. And this is just for one youth camp. Um, right? Uh, was that helpful? <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, any questions based on that? Any thoughts that you want to share? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks, Divya. Um, yes, uh, I think, uh, you know, planning for a youth camp is some of the most fun times I've ever had in youth ministry. Uh, you know, everybody's coming together, everybody's excited, uh, and everybody is uh, pumped and it's like, yeah, Pastor, I will do this, we'll do that, you know, we'll take care of this, we'll take care of that. Uh, and uh, and at the same time, there are those individuals who a certain uh, responsibility will be given and it will not be taken care of. And so it's not always a uh, walk in the park. Um, you know, why I'm sharing all of this and why I share the, the, uh, all, you know, the details of this is that although they are volunteering, you know, and if they don't do their part, uh, there's nobody else to fill in for them because they said yes to take care of, for example, transport. So if Sam says, uh, he, if he doesn't do his part, uh, you have to, I, as a pastor, I have to hold them accountable, saying, okay, you said you're going to do this, you did not do it. Uh, you know, it's not that, okay, I'm a youth pastor, now I'm a pastor, I have to be, you know, okay, always forgiving and all of that. No, there's a difference between being gentle and being holding an individual accountable. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm saying, right? And um, so all of that goes into playing... Um, making a youth ministry successful, having a strong team, uh, having a clear, planned, detailed uh, 
you know, kind of a list, if I have to say. OK, and the rest of the things in this document is about uh, just the events, everything that happens at APC, from the monthly youth meetings, what happens, how often do we meet, and the, every other event that happens. That's basically it. OK. Um, so that's about it for this session, guys. I am um, not much. I will pause here for today. And uh, if you have any questions or if you want to ask or say something, um, you, you can please feel free to share. All right, then, if there are no questions or thoughts, uh, we'll end our session for today. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, I hope there was something that you could learn from today's sessions. Uh, God bless you, and I will see you once again next week. All right, take care. Bye.